Hi everyone, today I am using the Delivering Cheer stamp set. This is such a fun stamp set. I love the simplicity in that it has no dies or punches. It's just a stamp set and sometimes that's kind of nice. You don't have so many things to look at. It's just simple. It's perfect in its simplicity. I also like the um, fun way to kind of mix and match tops and bottoms and it's just really cute. Um, one of my favorite things is this little stocking. <laughs> so you can put these little leggings, these little leg warmers or patterned stockings tights on this person here. And you know, then now she's got some patterned leggings, which I think is really fun. Anyway, so the Delivering Cheer stamp set, this is from the July to December mini catalog. And it's great because you've got something for holiday, you've got something for fall, and you've got something for Christmas, but this can be used for birthday too. Now there isn't a happy birthday in the set, but that's okay because um, you know, you've got birthday stamps, you've got a happy birthday somewhere, right? So you can mix and match this with some of your other sentiments and it's just really sweet. So I, I'm gonna use this today and I'm gonna pair it with um, a paper called, um, what is it called? I forget, Beauty of the Earth. This is in the annual catalog and it has these really pretty um, kind of fall looking papers and I love them, especially this one. I'm on my second pack of this. These colors are what I'm going with today. And I just love the watercolor look of this. I like this sky. I've used this on scrapbook pages and cards before. These leaves are gorgeous. This one, wintry, kind of misty forest. Anyway, this is the one we're gonna use. And it's kind of as if you were looking from the ground up at the peaks of trees. You're standing in the middle of the forest and you're looking up and you've got all these trees kind of going into each other. I love this paper by itself. You could frame it and hang it up. Um, it's really pretty. Unfortunately, you're not gonna get that effect because I'm gonna cut it all up, but it's really a cool paper. So that's what we're using. It's from Beauty of the Earth. And here is the card. I'm gonna show you that real quick and then we'll make it. So here's that paper I was talking about. Okay, so my pieces are, I'm gonna use a card base in Cajun Craze. It's funny, I think I bring this out every October and November and then I put it away for the rest of the year and it's such a great color. It's one of my favorites. I'm kind of a fall person, so I don't know why I forget about it. I'm using basic white for the inside. That's just a four by five and a quarter. I've got this piece here we're gonna stamp on and this is two by four. And then I've got a two and a quarter by four and a quarter matte piece. I've got a two by five in Misty Moonlight. Here's our paper here. This is cut uh, four by five and a quarter. And then I have a tiny little scrap two by one in uh, Misty Moonlight also. Okay, so let's make the card. Now I think I mentioned, or maybe I didn't, I'm gonna watercolor. So often I've been using my Stampin' Blends to color in, and I love my Stampin' Blends, and I love watercoloring, I love using all different kinds of color, coloring mediums, but I sometimes forget about watercolor pencils, and they're so great, I get, you can see I get a lot of use out of them. I, I think I'm on my second um, box of, box one, and they last years. I mean, I just use them a ton, and I use them in classes, and so I, a lot of people are using my class my pencils but they're really great and I want to show you where to find them just in case you forget to look for them they are in after you've got all your ink pads there's you know you've got your ink pads but then here are the assortments and bundles where you can buy um, you know color packs in families and things which is nice but these little things here are sometimes often forgotten and here are the watercolor pencils and there are two assortments I want to tell you assortment one and assortment two both are great. One of them, assortment one, is a little bigger because it has a black and a white. And you might think, some people wonder why you would want a white watercolor pencil. It's great. I love it. I use it a lot on when you're watercoloring a stamped image on maybe a crumb cake or craft paper. It looks really beautiful. So um, the white is really nice. Then the assortment two came out a year later and it has some really pretty colors too. And it has some of the brighter colors like um, granny apple green and some purples, but they're both really great and I think they, they complement together. Not every Stampin' Up! color is available in a pencil, but they've really picked and chosen the perfect uh, colors, I think. So I really like these. I hope they stay in the catalog forever. They're great, right next to the pastels, which are also really fun. But here's what I'm gonna be using, the watercolor pencils. Okay, and I'm actually using some from both families, which might be annoying to some of you. Actually, maybe I'm not. I am using, yeah, I am, because Old Olive is over here. If you only had to get one, you'd want to get color assortment number one, I think, because you'd want that black and white and gray. I'm using from both, but they're really inexpensive. Like if you bought markers and things, they're a little more expensive. However, you can get both packs. Like one pack is only $12.50 and the other one is $16. So together, you're, 
you know, you're still under $30. So it's really nice. I think you should get both. <laughs> That's just me. Okay, let's start stamping. Enough of that. Uh, the colors I'm going to use today are Old Olive, Cajun Craze, um, Crushed Curry, Night of Navy, and Basic Gray. And I set aside my little stampy pieces. Here they are. So let's do our stamping first. Now, I think I mentioned these come in two parts. You've got a bottom and a top. And I'm going to use the kind of more fall. She's got kind of maybe your rain boots on. It's kind of wet and mucky season. Um, and the little branches here. Now, you can make these less fall-like. Uh, if you wanted to, but I'm going to stick with fall colors. I bet that would look nice in some pine boughs with berries too, so you can kind of make that Christmassy as well. And I'm going to stamp the bottom half of the person first. I don't know that it matters, but that's what I, I'm going to do. I'm also using Stays On ink. Now I'm using this because it's waterproof, and um, Stays On is a great ink pad to have on hand if you like different coloring mediums because waterproof is perfect it just can't be used with um, our stamp and blends but it's perfect for the pencils so I'm gonna ink bottom half and then the top half oops okay now you may say but her scarf hangs below. That's okay. They were really smart in that, um, you know, you don't have to be so perfect. There's not like an actual cutout for the scarf. I'll show you what I mean as I lift up. So this um, jacket or whatever it is goes up into here, but they made sure to not go past the mitten. So it's kind of like you're stamping on top of the last button and that is okay. So her hands, you just have to make sure that you meet the uh, end of her arms at the top of the jacket. That's the only thing you have to worry about. Don't worry about the fact that you're going to stamp on top of this last button. See, there's one, two, three, four buttons, but you only see one, two, three. It's because the fringe of the scarf covers the last one, and that's totally fine. <clears throat> then there's this little piece here, which is nice, just so that she's not floating in the air. She's kind of standing more on some ground, and you can decide if you want it on one side like it's a shadow. You can go right across. I'm just going to give her a little ground. Okay, so there's our image, and now we're going to color it in. So I wanted to stick with just a few colors to make it more simple, and I'm picking colors right out of that paper. And I chose Cajun Craze, which is our base, and so I'm going to go ahead and add that. Now you can be precise. I know I'm going to put water on top of this, so I'm not being precise. Um, and that's up to you. You can decide that you want to just use these pencils as pencils, and you're not even going to add water on top. Totally a great option as well. And I'm doing more of the Cajun Craze than the other colors, just because it's my base color. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in that crushed curry. I kind of thought... I'll do these. And then I just wanted to bring in some of that blue. It was in the paper, not in the pattern that I'm using because I'm using this one. But in one of the other patterns, there was some blue, and I thought it was kind of pretty, and I wanted to bring in another color, and I thought blue was kind of fun, different. I mean, I don't it's not a real plant, right? <laughs> but it's pretty. You can choose old olive or another green if that blue is weird to you. Okay, now while I have Night of Navy, um, I'm going to do her mittens and her leggings. Now you can, I'm going to show you, light pressure, you can do a really light coloring. Or if you do harder pressure, you can get a darker coloring. So I'm going to see how you can get light and dark of the same 
pencil and that's kind of a fun thing to do so I'm going to intentionally go dark where the cuffs are for example Okay, and then I'm going to do just a little bit of her scarf and the leggings. So here I'm going to show you that light pressure thing again. So I'm kind of doing light pressure. I've got the pencil kind of on its side and I'm just applying light, soft strokes here. But if I wanted to kind of give her some more roundness to her leg, I can put the pressure a little harder and then I'm going to get a darker, like a shadow where her coat is covering the leggings. And because it's kind of got darkness on the side, it kind of makes the leg more round. Now I'm going to blend that out with my water in the next step. But again, you don't have to do that step if you don't want to. You can just leave it as pencil coloring and um, that's great too. So that's the fun thing about the pencils. You can use them as pencils or take it a step farther. It depends on what you're in the mood for and go ahead and use it with water. Okay, I'm going to make her coat old olive. I'm going to do that same thing again. I'm doing light pressure. And then where the creases are here, I'm going to apply a little heavier pressure just to get a little more of that pigment where the creases are. Some of that's going to go away when we add water and that's okay. You can add it again. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're coloring her arms now. I'm going to do heavier pigment on her elbows and where the bouquet kind of goes over, like it's giving a shadow. All right, and then the paper that's wrapped around the bouquet, I'm going to do in basic gray. I'm going to go very light with the basic gray though. I only want to make it so it's not so white. So I'm going to add the shadows kind of where it's coming together in her arms, where it overlaps, up at the top. And I think there'd be a shadow here because we've got another layer. So I'm doing that. Okay, so you can leave it and be done right here. Oh, I'm also going to add a little bit of basic gray to the ground that she's standing on. Okay, you can leave it right there and be done. Or you can grab uh, your water painters or a brush with water. I have these water painters. These are also from Stampin' Up. They come in a pack of three. I'm missing one. I think it's in my travel bag. Um, it comes with a wash brush, which is like a flat. Great for backgrounds. And then it comes with two different sizes of the rounds, and I am missing the smaller one. So let me put this away. And you just fill these with water, and they're great because you can travel with them, which I do, and that's why I'm missing one. <laughs> uh, I do want to say, if you do get them, you have to, you know how we were kind of taught righty tidy, lefty Lucy? These are not made in America, and they don't follow that rule. So you don't want lefty Lucy. You want, I don't know how to say, another, another poem for that, but go the opposite way. Okay, so now I'm going to add water, and all I'm going to do is I want it to be wet, and I squeeze the brush. I usually keep my stamp and scrub next to me when I watercolor because I like to um, squeeze, let it drop, and then I kind of take some of the water off by rubbing it across the stamp and scrub, and then I'm going to go ahead and blend my colors out. So I'll start with the basic gray. I'm just going to go over where it's at blend out that gray just a little bit. I want the gray to be soft. Barely there color. Okay. There. 
right? So the gray is down. Oops, I got gray down here. Now you don't need a cup of water to rinse this in. You can just kind of go back and forth on your paper, or if you have, like I do, your stamp and scrub next to you, you can go back and forth. The gray was pretty light. I don't even need to squeeze to get more water, so I'm not even gonna bother. Now I'm gonna move on to my next lightest color. I like to work light to dark, just, I don't know, so that I don't have, I have less chance of mixing things up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of color and spread out that crushed curry a little bit. Okay, and then my next lightest color, I'm not sure, I'm going to say um, Cajun Craze. my brush between my next group of colors so you give your brush a little squeeze and it'll drop a little bit of water to kind of help clean it so it's like self-cleaning a little squeeze water comes out um, if you want to go across your paper here to see if you've gotten it clean now um, I don't want it dripping wet sometimes you do you want to get it real wet squeeze it really good and you can do a nice wash but here I'm doing tiny little areas so I don't want it dripping wet let's go ahead and do that blue Now they um, are saying this is night of navy, but I think it depends on how much pressure you put, how dark of a blue you get. And I intentionally did not want it super dark because I'm going to pair it with uh, Midnight Muse, which is my current um, go-to color these days. <laughs> I really go through a lot of, not Midnight Muse, is it Midnight Muse? Misty Moonlight. We used to have a Midnight Muse. Misty Moonlight. All right, here are those gloves. and her skirt and those leggings so I want to work if, if I did a light to dark kind of situation like I did on her leggings I want to start in the light area and kind of go towards the dark or you might you know kind of lose the dark you might push it so far into the light that you don't see it anymore So I'm kind of working in the light area and then moving toward the dark. Okay. All right, now last is just that green. So I'm going to I like to kind of put my tip back into um, a point because when I brush it against here, it kind of goes flat and I like it nice and pointy. Anyway, so that's what I was doing. I didn't want to not tell you what I was doing. <laughs> Again, I'm going to kind of work in the light area, and then remember I put some darker pressure in the crease. I want to not lose that, so I'm working towards the crease. Moving towards the crease. towards the elbow, but that's where I made it darker. Okay, so there I have it. Now I did not do this on watercolor paper. This is on basic white, and I can get away with that because I am not heavily using a lot of water. I am just kind of lightly adding water. I made sure that my brush was not super saturated, and I was just blending it out. If you wanted to do some drastic watercolor and um, really add a lot of water, you would want to stamp on watercolor paper or shimmery white cardstock from Stampin' Up. Both of those work and will withstand a lot more water. This is just basic white cardstock and it does not withstand a ton of water. It'll do like I don't have any pilling at all, 
but if I were to kind of go over it again and again, I might get some pilling. I do want to show you, you can do a couple different things. Like if I wanted my Cajun craze a little darker, which I do, I can take my water painter here and I can kind of go on the tip of my watercolor pencil and pick up some ink, or not ink, some pigment, and I can dab it where I want it and that way I have more deep, rich colors. So um, it just kind of depends on what you want to do. And I really want that Cajun craze to show up because that is my base color and I really like it. <laughs> okay, so there I've darkened my um, Cajun craze. Now let's say you needed to darken your jacket a little bit or so you can do the same thing. You could pick up some green with your pen, with your um, painter and then come back in and let's say you lost some of your definition of your darks. You can go back in and add some. If you had used watercolor paper, you could even go in and color again and add more pigment that way. Since I used um, basic white cardstock, I don't want to do that because I, you know, I've already kind of added water to what non watercolor paper and I don't want to accidentally put too much pressure on it and tear it but I think I'm good and so it did not you know it's it's actually it's really nice it's smooth there's no tearing or pilling it didn't go through the back so I just want to show you that I'm using basic white for water coloring but it's okay because I'm not using a ton of water <laughs> all right so that is that now we're gonna put the card together I am gonna show you a tip for how to flag the end of this and let's get some of these pieces away so that I have less little tiny pieces on my desk. I'm going to hold the corners down just a little bit longer because it's watercolor which kind of starts to warp the paper. I didn't put a lot of water so it's not not warped. Okay then on the inside I haven't decided what I'm going to do for a sentiment there so I'm going to leave it plain the only embellishment I'm going to give it is a strip of paper. Whenever I do a background like this, for example, and I'm cutting them, you end up like I have two because I did one already that I'll show you in a minute. And then I'm doing this one. That strip is um, has a tiny little piece of, of designer series paper left over. And I usually save all my little scraps depending on how little they are. But it's, you get these little strips left over and I like to just keep them sometimes and add them to the inside of the card. Just kind of bring the inside or the outside in just to kind of, it's better than storing these and not using them. There's some really fun ways to use your scraps so if you want to do that you could save them and use them on other things but I always feel like I end up with a ton and they don't get used so I'd rather use them. Oh I forgot this little strip. So this is a strip from the same pack. Isn't that pretty? To use that as a little image also it's two inches by four and I'm just putting it across the back here to anchor my greeting which I'll show you in a second so we've got this all right and then I wanted to emboss this and I forgot to do that ahead of time that's okay I will do it really quickly right now the Tasteful Textiles 3D embossing folder. It just kind of makes it look like canvas, which speaks to me because I paint, <laughs> but I really like it. It just gives it a little something, a little texture, maybe a burlap or a linen. It's really kind of nice. T tasteful Textile. So that's what that is. Here, I brought this out just because it's sometimes easier to see the photo. Okay, and how I'm going to flag this, and we used to sell a punch called the triple banner punch that punch three different sizes and I usually sell my retired things I think I have that in my retired sale bunt you know basket or on my blog I have a retired uh, list it's probably in there so I took it off my shelf and then I thought oh but I liked how quick it was to flag the ends and then I realized this is perfect and it can fit any size you know you just have to kind of pay attention to where you're at and I kind of look at the lines in the back and see where I'm at, how far I am from each side, and I just punch and then I've got this nice little banner. So I wanted to show you that. It's this punch here. I forget what this is called. Tailor made tag, tailor tag. 
I'll look it up on Fast Forward. Tailored tag. Okay. Put that down. I'm not sure what side is up. I don't think it matters. Giving myself a little border around maybe fourth of an inch at the top and a little bit bigger at the side. I'm going to go ahead and place my image down with dimensionals. Stick it up just a tiny bit. Alright, and that's going down. Same thing, a small um, margin at the top, a little bit wider at the side. And then I am going to put my greeting on this little piece here, which is um, two by one. I think I should have probably gave myself a bigger stamping space and then trimmed after, but we'll see how well I do. I also grabbed a scrap that has a little bit of a score line in it, so it must have been from something else. So we'll see if it's okay with the embossing powder or if that score line gets in the way. I'm going to emboss with copper. I love copper for fall. I usually just grab a little scrap out of my recycle bin here. I know there's fancier ways of doing this, but I'm kind of more speedy. <laughs> I just grab a scrap. Okay, so now I'm going to heat this up and you'll see it turn into a beautiful copper that I didn't give myself a lot of space to hold on to. So I usually grab a bone folder or I have these little skewers in my room for twirling paper around. So I'm going to hold it with a skewer. Okay, so we're going to put that down, but first I want to put a cute little bow. Now in the background here and on my um, flowers here, whatever they are, branches, I, um, am, I used crushed curry. However, we don't have a crushed curry ribbon that I'm using right now. This is bumblebee, and even though it's different, I think because of the watercolor aspect, the kind of darks and lights you can get around with that, I think bumblebee works perfectly. So I'm going to, and I love the gingham bow, so... I'm going to say it works perfectly. It does, but I do love this gingham. <laughs> All right, and I want kind of a biggish bow because it's going to go across here under my sentiment. And I'm going to trim it just past the rip, just past the loop. I'm going to have to go and fix this side. Okay. And then I'm going to put down with a glue dot. And then my sentiment I'm going to put right on top. Now this one I'm going to make a little bridge by, I'm going to put two dimensionals on this side because it has to go over the knot, so it needs to be a little higher. I don't like it to not lay flat. And then on this side we're only going to put one dimensional because remember this is already up one. There it is. I think that's super cute. If you have a fall birthday, this would be a nice fall birthday, and you can change the sentiment to a birthday, or that's okay too. You can put the um, warming thoughts to you for, and then add a birthday sentiment on the inside. So I think it's a really fun way to use your watercolor pencils, and I hope that you'll consider giving them a try. They're super fun, easy to use. Um, I do want to show you how they come. They come in a box. I don't know if they're still in this color because this is I bought these a while ago, but I put them together. <laughs> In, I've got all mine together in a little case here, a little stamp case, and I keep them together. And I want to show you that you can use um, blender pens with them too. And this is something Stampin' Up! sells. And you can take a blender pen to blend out instead of watercolor. So if the watercolor idea intimidates you, and maybe you're worried that water is going to make a mess, you can take a blender pen and blend out too. Yeah, I'm going to take that and blend out those lines and get a nice soft look. 
so you can use them. I keep them in my watercolor pencil box. And I want to give you my suggestion for a pencil sharpener. This is um, Faber-Castell, and it's available at most art stores. Blick um, Art Store. I got mine at my local art shop. But um, it's a great pencil sharpener, and it has um, keeps the shavings inside, and then it doesn't chew up your pencils. The worst is if you get a really cheap pencil sharpener, and every time you're you're sharpening and sharpening and sharpening and it breaks the tip off and you sharpen and sharpen and it's just chewing apart your pencils and they get smaller and smaller and smaller and you're like, ah, um, this is a great pencil sharpener. <laughs> All right, that's it. I hope that you'll take a look at the Delivering Cheer stamp set. Super cute. I think it's adorable. Um, I'm going to do another card um, with the birthday. Um, maybe tomorrow or maybe next week. I just want to show it. I want to play around with it some more, but I needed a fall card. Um, today <laughs> for a poss possible stamp camp ideas. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for stamp camp yet. So I'm trying to figure that out this week. All right. Delivering cheer. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and come back again. Bye.